EIC, it's the EAC show. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon. And I am Marcus Mack, and this is the EAC show coming to you from sunny South Florida with episode 102. Episode 102, and today joining us, trying to redeem himself or for the horrible week that he had last week. LaVon Harvey. LaVon, we appreciate you coming on to the show again. I know you want to come on because you want to try to be better at your picks this week than you were last week. For those that are watching on YouTube, you can see that I am wearing the King's Crown. I'm definitely used to wearing this thing a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> Marcus, if you could put some like like royalty music in the background, I'd appreciate I'll, it. Yeah, King Joffy Jofa. Oh, LaVon, <laughs> thank you for joining us on episode 102. Appreciate it. And no problem at all, man. And, yeah, and the term horrible is a stretch, but I'm going to let you have it, bro. And also joining us, UCF activist, <laughs> overall sports enthusiast, and EAC Foundation helper out here on the show, Cameron did it. Cameron, so listen. Marcus, Marcus, say it. Go ahead, say it. Now listen, Cameron, for those of you that can't see, that's listening, on streaming platforms, Cameron is wearing the most epic, cinematic, monumental mustache today. Pornographic mustache. Straight pornographic <laughs> mustache. Now listen, his mustache looks like he swings on the weekends and he might get just, just a little bit of high. Just a little bit of high. Maybe a bump here and there. You know what I'm saying definitely a little bit of weed, but he definitely looks like he swings on the weekends. Yeah, man. Um, so obviously... I never really did the mustache, but my brother's a firefighter, so they do like this no shave November where they do a mustache, and I just figured let me roll with it. And I'm not gonna lie, it might be like a year round thing for me now. I'm kind of <laughs> it. So we'll see where it goes. At, at Levon, at Levon Harvey, please tell me that his mustache doesn't give you Ron Jeremy vibes. Real talk. <laughs> Jeremy vibes, Gardner Minshew vibes. Minshew, I mean, like that. Yeah. Yeah, the Minshew mustache. I like it. <laughs> so, at, so at Marcus Smack, let's let's talk a little bit. You, myself, and LeVon, and, and Cam, you can chime in a little bit. Um, last week, obviously, I won. I was killing you guys from the very beginning. I went 2-0 and old, straight off the first two games. I told you guys, you guys piggybacked off each other. I don't know why you did that. But at Marcus Smack, what, what happened last week? I mean, I think, I think, man, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, starting from the Tennessee game, I believe I took Tennessee, right? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you did, I just know for a fact Warren picked the Bears. I'm salty. Yes, I picked the Tennessee Titans. He picked the Bears. I think you did Tennessee too. So my bad. No, yeah, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. Wait a second. See, this is more and uh, Cam. You tell me how you feel about this. We do this show. And this is our Effort Friday show. So we do the show Effort Friday. When right. I end up picking the line on Effort Friday, it's different than when I end up picking the line on Sunday. So I actually would have covered that game. Why? It was a seven and a half to close that. No, it's the, it's it, it pushed at seven. Right. You oh, went up to seven and a half. It was six and a half when we recorded. And I remember that. Remember when Marcus was making a big deal about that extra half a point? You know what I'm saying? Correct. That's what that so, point all the difference. So you know, he's a show pick, sir. Listen, listen, listen. I knew, and and Cam, at Cameron didn't. And Cam, tell me how you felt about this. I knew that Seattle was not going to beat the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. Yeah, it, it's kind of weird because Seattle's usually great going East Coast. I think something crazy like Russell Wilson seven and zero when traveling from west to east coast or something like that. But um, this is kind of like a perfect storm for Seattle. Their defense has been, I mean, to say below average is sort of like an understatement. They have just been trash. Um, they had some help come in. They tra made, made some moves before the trade deadline happened. But, I mean, Buffalo's defense is one of the sneakier, sneakier defenses in the league. And we didn't even see Josh Allen had a great first three games or so, and then he sort of fell off and, came back down to earth and now it's almost like he just revved it back up with this game against Seattle. He was he he was unstoppable. He couldn't miss. It was it was kind of it was shocking to see a little bit. Winner Marcus Mack. 
LeVon went on an epic rant about how the Miami Dolphins were going to get smacked. And we all agreed. We all had that game. We all took Arizona. No, he went, he, yeah, he went on a rant saying that they weren't going to get oh, smacked. Oh, no, he said they were. He said the Dolphins were going to get smacked. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He did agree. But oh, yeah. But we, we definitely acknowledge that he's a, he's a Dolphins fan. Definitely acknowledge that. And That's he said, yeah, so it's funny. a fact. That uh, that Miami was going to get ran through. He did say that. Look, let me take the lead on this one, okay? I, I absolutely, it was a it was a lock for me. I mean, what a what a yo, what a trap, Vegas. Yo, Vegas is the worst. Five, it was four and a half, five points. You, I can't pick Tua. There's no way. The yo. Dolphins great against the Rams. They're not going to do it again. Um, you got you got Mighty Mouse running all over the place. You got Hopkins, Isabella. I'm telling you, th- that core, they, they're all spread out. You got Edmonds in the backfield. I thought he was going to have a huge game. He didn't. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get plus, it. Plus, how about the fact that the Dolphins, I heard a crazy stat, that they haven't won in Arizona since, like, 1996. Like, they just don't do well in the stadium. So, what? kind of re- reverse perfect storm for Arizona. I mean, Two of making people believers. He was like the ultimate game manager in his first start, like throwing dick and dunks. I think he had maybe one touchdown, like just sort of stayed away from the long throws. And now he just came out of his shell. It just took him a game to do it. So I'm excited to see the matchup this week. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but the Herbert versus two is going to be nice. Let me, yeah, let me give a shot. Let me give a shot. Let me, hold on, hold on. Let me give a shout out to Marcus Mack. Marcus, this is your saying. Everything in Florida is what? You turn off your, your mute. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, people. I was on mute. My daughter. I got three people here. Everything. I don't have to say anything tonight. My daughter, my, <laughs> my daughter was in the room, and I just, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, but everything in Florida is what? Sucky, 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 sucky. Yeah. So, the, so, 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 obviously, LeVon goes on the rant. We all agree. We all lose that game. We lose. I am the only smart one that took Jacksonville and said Jacksonville was going to cover. LeVon was beating me up because he said Gardner Minshew wasn't the quarterback. It didn't matter. They were going to cover anyway because it was going to be a divisional game. That ended up happening. But LeVon and myself, let's give a shout-out to Marcus for getting a game right. You and I both had the Tampa Bay Bucks smacking the New Orleans Saints. And the New Orleans Saints smacked that dog shit out of Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks. Yeah, they didn't even even come close to covering. No, nope. that's, yeah, that's that's the worst pick of the day. It's not. It's not close. How fucking boring is it when a Sunday night game, the last game of the night, ends up being some shit like that at Cameron Dinning? Like real talk. Like when when that turns into a shit show, like just I'd rather watch QVC or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of um, it's kind of weird because you saw the Bucks rolling, uh, and everyone's expecting them to continue to roll with the addition of Antonio Brown. It was almost just like a a great offense becoming better. Um, but we didn't see that. We saw the exact opposite. We saw a frustrated Mike Evans who's barely getting the ball. I think he get, he's averaging like three targets a game, which is just absurd for a guy that's 6'5 and has been there for seven years and is their top receiver. Um, so I don't know. There's, there's, some, there's something in the water right now brewing there. I still like the Bucks to go, you know, in the distance and make a playoff push, and they're still sitting at it with a nice record. But I like the Saints coming out with a week one victory against the Bucks and confirming the fact that they are still the, – the road for the AFC South still goes through New Orleans. Absolutely. So big for them to sort of, you know, put the crown on their head. No pun intended as Emilio is rocking the crown himself. So you see, yo, look, I'm all, look, this is royalty right here, yo. I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to make sure whoever's right this week, I'm going to make sure that you have this in place for next Friday, Epic Friday show. I don't give a, I don't care if I got to drive all the way to Port St. Lucie to meet LeVon and give it to him. I was, I was about to text you my, you got my address or no? <laughs> He's ready for it. On, on everything. So real quick, I know we're going to get into Cam's Corner segment. Cam Corner for you listeners and the viewers on YouTube is going to be a couple games. I think it's like how many games? Like four or five games of college football, something like that, right, Cameron? That's right. I'm going to do five. I'm going to pick five games. He's going to do his spreads, and LeVon and I will agree with him. Isn't there there a couple of those games that's postponed? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. There's like 15 games that are either postponed or canceled due to the big season. 
I really do think and I really do feel, LeVon, that this is all myself and Marcus yeah. Max's fault because we mentioned that coronavirus was doing so well when it came to football, and we knew it was tomfoolery and this, that, and third. And Marcus Mack and myself really jinxed the NFL and NCAA football because we actually put it up in the air. We threw it out in existence that this was nonsense. And now I, I re- we're getting all these canceled games. I remember. I remember. Bad. Awful. Awful. Sucks. Mm. Straight sucks. But we know it doesn't suck. This very, very nice crown that I'm wearing right here, as you can see. Okay. This is what uh, wear. First, okay, let's, let's pause real quick. Give me like tw- 20 seconds before we move on to Cam's Corner. What we're not about to do right now, Emilio, is just breeze by the fact that I got destroyed by you guys about this, this Steelers game. I'm going to need y'all to explain y'all stuff right now. <laughs> what, Steelers, what, what Steelers game? Oh, it's called the, the one that was 14 and a half. What, what, oh, let me, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let me guess. Emilio picked the Ravens. No, 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 no. no. We're no, talking no, no, about no. Steel, the Steelers, Steelers versus the Cowboys, uh, Cowboys. Cowboys. Oh, I was doing two Matt weeks Ford. ago. Help me out here. I got destroyed for that. Distru- you, took, you, up, took, you took the Cowboys with the points? Absolutely. Fortunate Bravo. Bravo. He, didn't, he didn't want to. He didn't want to. Are you, dude, let's hear the <laughs> little crazy. <laughs> I was like this. What, hey, Harvey, what, what, why, are you, why are you shaking your head? No, 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 Marcus, hold on. Harvey, why are you shaking? I'm going to tell you why I'm shaking my head. It's too many points. You didn't I even want to take the Jets, and I told you the Jets were going to cover. No, but if I had to pick a side, first, if I had to pick a side, I was picking the Jets eight, and I was I was a good pick. I'm not giving Cam Newton all those points, and we're going to run it back again. Seven Listen, points. Anyways, we'll save it. I'm not. Levon, I get it, but if, unless you're rocking this crown right here, son, you know what I'm saying? Cool. <laughs> Four, six, seven, crown. Southwest. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm going to text you. I'm going to text you. <laughs> So this segment of the show is going to be basically Cameron Dinning giving us his picks on college football games that he likes. It's going to happen tomorrow. Hopefully they don't get canceled because of Corona before tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon or whatever it may be. And LeVon, you and I will chime in on whether or not we agree with him or we disagree with him. Oh. Yeah, you got some, you had some big games get canceled. Obviously, I mean, Alabama, LSU, uh, there was a ranked matchup that got canceled, a double ranked matchup. So uh, hopefully that's all we're seeing this week. But uh, so that's, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a limited slate here. Uh, I used to, I like to see a big slate, but I'll, I'll just say what I'm, what I'm working with here. I got five games that I feel very confident in. I've done this cams quarter twice already. I've gone two and three both times. Times, which I've lied to you. I've told you I was going to go three and two. So this time I'm going to I'm going to flip things around. I'm going to claim at least four and one here. Ooh. I'm going to go a little confident. Ooh. Very I confident. see. Take Ooh. this to the Wells Fargo. Here we go. My first game on the slate. I got Army at Tulane. I am taking the over 45 and a half in this game. Both these teams are top 50 in rushing in the nation. Now Tulane has not scored less than 30 points a game. They're like three and four or two and five or whatever the hell they are, but they score points. Now, they haven't seen a defense like Army, but Army hasn't seen an offense like this. So I just have – I have a high-score game. I don't even know how it's 45 and a half. I don't know if there's running backs and quarterbacks that are injured or have COVID. I didn't do any research, but just looking at the bare number, I'm taking the over here. The next game on the slate, I got Georgia State – oh, you want to pause to, to – to, yeah, uh, yeah, so that's what I was going to say, yeah, while wow, Marcus Mack is sniffing on some vitamins over there, <laughs> some THC, as he's sniffing on some THC, we call it vitamins on the show. And, yeah, in the, great state, in the great state of Florida. Health and glue. So, LeVar, let me know, you agree or disagree with, uh, with Cam on that pick? Question, so I'm going to keep it a buck with you as far as these teams are concerned. I'm one of those guys that only bet, like, the, the mid-tier, the high-tier games, but yeah. what's this game? This is Tulane and Army. See, I'm the opposite. I'm a UCF fan, so I'm I'm very in tune with the group of five, and I know how to pick some of these games. What What's the actual spread? I'm just curious. The okay. actual spread of the game is Tulane minus three and a half. Now Army is six and one, but they Correct. play like Mercer in Middle Tennessee, and Tulane's okay. four and four, but they play in the American, which is a it's a stronger conference. Correct. Correct. I, you know what? I'm going to agree with you. I like that because I've um, – Army tends to run the score up. They score, they score a decent amount of points. They do. I, 
I have followed them. I've bet on them before. I've bet against them, and they put up some points. So if Tulane can do their part, I, I feel like, which they which they're favored. I, yeah. I think they can go over forty five. I like that. Here on the EAC show, we're all going with Cam's pick for number one. We're all going to go with the over. Love it. Appreciate it, fellas. And, yeah, the scary thing, I think the reason why it's 45 and a half is because both of these teams are run-heavy teams first. Yep. And what does that mean? That means the clock's going to be running the entire game, which is bad for the over. So, little, little tip there from the guy. Wait, right, so we going easy. over or we're going under? No, we're going over, but I'm oh, okay, saying okay. that that's not going to matter. But I'm saying if it goes under, it's because of that. No, got you, got you, got Next you. Next game on the slate, we have Georgia State versus App State. Another one of these obscure teams. But <laughs> I'm going – App State has been good to me the entire year. I think I've bet them like five times this year, and I'm like four and one with the spread. They're always crazy spreads, like minus 27 and a half, whatever. They're minus 17 at home against Georgia State. Georgia State is three and three. App State is – Five Who cares? Five. App State. Go with okay. App State. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At this point, I mean, we all remember the game, the famous game against Michigan. They've been on a roll since then. But honestly, man, Georgia State, they are 0-7 in their last seven meetings against App State. App State is home. I really don't know why it's only 17 points, but I'm taking App. Hey, uh, LeVon, you got App State? I'm down with App State. Uh, Every, I'm, I'm going with that. They beat Michigan, what, six, seven years ago? That classic yeah. game, let's, just, let's run it. Let's run it. That's right. That's when they were D2, now they're D1, man. They only know how yep. to climb. Yep. Next, next game on the, on the slab here, we have a little bit. We're going up. We're going up to the Pac-12. We're not going too far up because the Pac-12 is garbage as shit. Mm. But we're going Oregon on the road against Wazoo, Washington State. Minus 10 Oregon. Now, I wish it was nine and a half but I'm going to eat the 10 points. I like Oregon. I like Oregon because not only are they so fast on offense, they got some of the fastest running backs I've ever seen. They don't look like they have a hangover uh, without with losing Justin Herbert. But Washington State looks like they got a hangover with losing Mike Leach. Yep. So I'm taking Oregon's, uh, Oregon minus 10. And they're the only one of the only teams in the Pac-12 that focus a little bit on defense. So that's what the I'm taking. King, the King says, give me the Ducks minus 10, baby. Nike. I like I like the Ducks too. I was going to mention the Mike Leach, the loss of Mike Leach. So, and Oregon has a chance to make it into the playoffs because some of these teams are going to lose, by the way. That's at the top. So, yeah, if they, they think in, they've got to run this table and run the score up too. So, I like right. the They have a limited amount of games to Pac 12 because they started late and they don't have that many yep. games to, to work with. But they have right now, this, according to the you know, ESPN FBI percentage, they have the sixth best chance to make the, the playoffs after the four current. And, mm -hmm. uh, Wisconsin at five and then them at six. Yep. So that's what I'm going with. Three. Next, I got my own conference, the American Conference. I had to pick one of these games every week, uh, but I am taking SMU plus one on the road against Tulsa. Now, this is a little strange here because SMU is ranked. Let me see here. What are they ranked? They're ranked 19th. They're 7-1. and one. The only loss they have is to Cincinnati, which looks like an absolute juggernaut this year. But uh, S Tulsa is 3-1. and one. They've beaten both teams in Florida, my UCF Knights, the USF uh, Bulls. They beat, like, another cupcake, and they lost their only game of the year to, uh, to Oklahoma State. They lost that game by, like, seven or eight points. And Oklahoma State's, like, a top-10 team right now. So they're having a nice little season to uh, Tulsa, but I'm saying their luck's going to run out eventually, and I think it's this game against SMU. SMU does not know how to score less than 40 points. I'm taking SMU plus one, and I'll also take the money line. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? I'm about to take Tulsa. Tulsa's going to win that game. They beat your boys. If they beat your boys, they could beat M SMU, so I'm going to take Tulsa. That's respect. Hey, I'm going to agree with – I'm going to agree with Bourne. I'm taking Tulsa, and I'm taking them for this reason. Every year, at least once, I'm seriously – I'm putting a big bet against Tulsa because it's just – it's Tulsa, and, and they you. screw me every time. Every <laughs> time. No, you can't do that. Wait, wait. Wait, LeVon, when you do that – okay, on this show, when you do that from now on, you have to say the Joe Pesci line, and I don't know if you remember Marcus Mack because you're old enough. They fuck you in the drive-thru. Whenever you order fucking food in the drive-thru, by the time you drive off, you get it. <laughs> classic. Classic Pesci. I'm telling That's you. That's your last one? No, it's not my last one, but I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not a big hype guy. Miami's on the hype train. Oh. I stay away from this thing. 
but I decided not to take Miami. I am taking the over in the Miami versus Virginia Tech game. Now, why am I doing this? It's 68 and a half points. That's a big number, right? Mm-hmm. Both of these defense are in the bottom 100 in college football. They just can't stop a nosebleed. They can't stop shit. So I'm just taking the points here. I'm terrified of taking Miami because they got like retard strength and then sometimes they come out completely flat. I just, I can't, I don't want to wake up on Sunday morning and say I lost because I took Miami. I won't do it. I won't be that guy. I'm taking the points. I fuck with you. I fuck with you. I'll take the over with you too because both defenses are straight trash, Pasuda, garbage, whatever way you want to damn say it. So I'll take, I'll take the over with you. Levon, what you think? Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and agree on that. I mean, Virginia Tech gave up 100 points. So what was it? Liberty? Liberty? Liberty, <laughs> <laughs> Liberty Bells. But I, and I, and I'm, I like Virginia Tech to bounce back and win this game. This is, this is a classic Miami just slip up. So I'm going to Tech to win the game, and I like the over, too. I like the call. And I, I believe the, uh, the spread for that game is – Nine? It's low. No, it's yeah. no spread. Three. Yeah, you're right. It, no, no, it's minus two Virginia Tech. Oh, and the reason yeah, why it is, it's it's a home game. So they give them three points for being at home. So they think correct. Miami is, is a really one game. Dog reality. Yeah, cor- correct. It's, it's going to be a close game. So, yeah, I'm not falling for that. Yeah, they, they slipped up last week. I like Tech to win this game throughout the crib, too. Like, yeah. We're going we're to jump you. My Tulsa pick is going to make me wear this crown even for this right here, too. Yo, Tulsa? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Tulsa is top 15 in the nation in points per game. So is SMU. I should have taken the over in that game. But Tulsa is a scary little team, man. They win these games that they're really not supposed to. They're tough. Oh, they're like a tough Oklahoma-ass team. Oh, how, many, how, many, how many more college picks do we have? That's, That's it. it. Dan, so, Marcus Mack, you got the, uh, the sports book up for all the NFL games, correct? Yes, I do, sir. Yes, I do. Now, Cam, are you going to stay on with us to do this, or are you going to hit it? Also, I'll hang around. All right, good. So we got Cam going to join us, and we're all going to make picks, and we're literally going to have Marcus Mack tell us all the 1 p.m. games. I'm going to go 4-1 and one on these 1 p.m. games. I'm, I'm calling it. <laughs> I'm sticking my neck out there. I'm saying I'm going to get them 4-1. and one. Maybe I get one wrong. So let's go. All right, so we started when you said 4. You said uh, four, 4 1 p.m. games. No, I don't know. I'm, about right. I'm just saying I'm going to go four and one. I'm guessing. <clears throat> yeah. Which okay. Is, this week we got like four. Man, pay attention, Marcus. Of course I'm paying attention. <laughs> of course. Yeah, we, got, we got a lot of afternoon games on Sunday, which is fun, man. I like it. We got like five afternoon games, four o'clock games. Yo, just Love for it. the record. I like that, I like just that for too. The record, yeah. These jewels, these jewels on this crown are from the king of Spain. Oh, okay. They look going. like thorough these... Toros. Collecting them jewels. I was just thinking that. No, it's gonna be. It's gonna be so like bitter when he has to hand that over. All right, so it's okay. It's actually, to to Levon's <laughs> point, there's five one o'clock games and six four p.m. games. I don't think that's ever happened where there's been Never. more four o'clock games than one o'clock games. I like that a lot. Yeah, let's I love get it. Let, let's get it started. All right, let's get it going, man. The first game on the uh, on the slate. Houston, Texas is going over to Cleveland. Cleveland is favored by three and a half. Wait, so now, Marcus, you direct who you want to speak first. And speak I will. We're going to go. We're going to go. LeVon. At, at LeVon. We're going to go at LeVon, at Emilio, at Cameron. I'm going to say my piece, and then I'm going to do the next, the, next, uh, the next team. Okay, so every single time, just me start, start with me? Every, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so what is it? You know, to be honest, I think it went up to four points, but guess what? It doesn't matter because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go against uh, 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 Houston right now. It's too many points. Uh, over three, I'm going Houston plus four. Let's run it, baby. I'm gonna take Deshaun Watson plus the points. Also, I don't think Baker Mayfield, him and his COVID checks. I think he does too many commercials, honestly. The Hulu commercial, he ends up having the, what I think is a progressive, or I forgot what it is. The one where he's in the – where the stadium, the stadium is in Yeah, house. he's in the stadium. I, I actually yo, like homie, it. Yo, homie, you're it's doing good. too many commercials, man. Like, you writing checks, your ass ain't cashing right now. Real talk. <laughs> you're, not even better, you're not even better than the quarterback that's playing against you tomorrow, I mean, on Sunday. So, I'm going to take Deshaun Watson plus the four points. Cam, let me know what you think. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation here because we all should be on the Brown train, but they are a team that wins games they're not supposed to and loses games they're not supposed to. I mean, they have these great wins, and then they, they put up an absolute dud and score three points in the last in their previous game. Now, the Texans are much better than their record. They're two and six, but they've played – they started out the year, they played, they played oh. the Chiefs. Then they played the, the the Ravens. Then they played the, the Steelers on the road. Oh. They, they had a hard rap. Um, so you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take chalk here. I, I hate it, but I have to go with the Texans plus three and a half with you guys, even though I think it could be a bounce back game for Baker. Come on, Marcus. This is this, this would be a first for me because I never go with Cleveland, but I'm gonna go with Cleveland Browns. You uh, had to go with this. Sh- 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 shit on you. Shit on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with uh with, with Cleveland Browns favorite about three and a half. Uh next on the on the one o'clock slot, we got the Jacksonville shit 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 extra shitty Jacksonville Jaguars going to Green Bay Packers, my yeah. cheese heads, and Green Bay is favored by get a load of this, fellas. 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Well, you know, call them what you want, but they covered last week against the Texans, so I was wrong. But guess what? I'm going to double down. Because oh, man. That bad man in Green Bay at the crib, the best receiver in the league, maybe second to Hopkins, Devontae Adams, and a healthy Aaron Jones. And this Jaguars defense is really bad, really bad. So I'm going to swallow the points and take Green Bay minus 13 and a half. At the crib, let's go. I don't even, yo, listen, I don't even see them. They're not going to win. And there's no way in the world they're covering that spread. 13 and a half. No way. So you go, so you go, who you going with, Marcus? Because you went out of turn. Who you going with? My, I was just, I was just chiming in with the brother. That's it. That's it. I mean, you already know I'm going cheese heads. But I'm, not, I'm, just, going against, I'm, just I'm not going against A-Rod as Cameron changed his hat from UCF Homer hat to the Green Bay Packers hat. I'm not going against the best quarterback in the league, hands down. <laughs> Yo, how did he change hats that fast? A-Rod is an animal. <laughs> he's a beast. He's a he's the GOAT. He is no joke. I think the man has 24 touchdowns and two interceptions. Listen, let me explain something to you. I'm going with the Green Bay Packers. This game should be minus 21, and they still would cover. He's a bad man. <laughs> Shut your as mouth. Stephen, as Stephen A. Smith <laughs> would say, I mean, he has found some stuff. I, I've said that on this, po- on this podcast before. I'll say it again. He has came out before the year started, and he said, I watched some tape from 2010 when we won the Super Bowl, and I saw something, and I'm going to get back to it this year. And it's working. I mean, he he he's been on fire. He he can't throw less than three touchdowns a week. Devontae Adams is having a, an unbelievable career year. They're turning this offense into the Saints, where they just throw the ball to Michael Thomas 15 times a game. This time it's Devontae Adams, and they hand the ball, and it's working. So I'm enjoying what they've been doing as a Packer fan, of course. If it's 13 and a half, I'm taking the Packers. If it's 14, I'm taking the Jags. But it looks like it's 13 and a half. Give me the Pack. Let's roll. Going with the Pack too, Marcus? Uh, yeah, no, definitely for sure. I just want to point out that uh, that Cameron definitely went and changed his hat and mustache. Yeah, I didn't think I peeped. But he came back, and the mustache kind of wiggled just a little bit. It's hanging lower now. Yeah, but I'm definitely going with all lower, with... like Rodgers is hanging. <laughs> hanging real low. This whole season he's been hanging low. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I'm definitely going with Green Bay, favored by 13 and a half. Next on the 1 o'clock slot, we got Philadelphia Eagles going to New York to face the Giants. The Philadelphia Eagles are favored by four. Oh. Eli Jones. Oh my God. Oh, I don't like him. I do not like him. Um Eli Jones. Okay, well, I'll say Ooh. this. Eli Jones. Daniel, you, you combine the two Giants yeah. quarterbacks, even oh, though they look like oh, the I same idiot. That, that, that went over my crown. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't gosh, I don't like him that much. I don't like him. They're at the house. Um, you know what? Oh, home dog. Home dogs. Man, that's tough. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to pick Carson Wentz and Miles Sanders and Goddard. And I think Alshon Jeffrey's back too. But then you have Rager as well. And you, you got, you got, uh, what's the name of the. Fulgham's nice. 
Yeah, Fulgham's nice, but guess what? Fulgham's going to be guarded by, um, what's his name, on the other side. So, but Fulgham is nice, though. I'm going to just... Janoris Jenkins, I think. Janoris uh, Jenkins is guarding him. Yeah, yeah, Janoris, I think. I'm going to just go ahead and swallow the points. The Giants have covered the last two weeks, and impressive. I didn't have him covering against the Bucks. I did not have him covering last week because I thought it was a, a flat spot for him against the Redskins. I'm going to triple down on it. I'm going to go against the Giants, and I'm going to go ahead. Eagles minus four. Yeah, you got to. Got to. Hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? I'm going yeah. with the Giants. Let me explain something to you. Joe Judge is literally getting these guys to play. He's basically doing the same thing that Brian Flores down in Miami is playing. Tell me all the players that are on the New York Giants. Uh, 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 uh. There's nobody. There's fucking nobody. There's a bunch of fucking nobody. I, other than Blake Martinez and Perryman, I can't name another motherfucking defensive player on that team that stands out. So I'm going to take the New York Giants because Joe Judge is doing an amazing job of coaching those guys. I think literally other than one fucking game, they've covered almost every fucking spread because they've been in every fucking game they played in. So I'm going to take the New York Giants. Yeah, uh, Daniel Jones really has, or Eli Jones, as LeVon likes to call him, he really does have staying power. Like, I'll watch these games, and it just seems like he's got nowhere to go, and or he's going to get sacked, or he doesn't have an option to throw to. And it, he just kind of somehow finds the way to move this shit offense down the field and get at least a field goal. So, for that reason, I mean, four-point dog at home. I mean, this division is just fucking uh, garbage. I mean, it's so bad. Seven wins is going to win this division. It's just terrible. So I, I think I just have to take the Giants. I like what they have on offense. Yeah, they have no Saquon Barkley, but if Daniel Jones cannot throw an interception, that's going to be the recipe right there. If you can't throw an interception, you have Golden Tate, who's finally back on the field for them, who's been nice the last mm. two. You got um, Sherling Shepard. You have Everett Ingram, who he's, he drops the ball a lot, but he still is a physical specimen. Wayne Gallman's coming around, starting to run into form. So, I mean, give me the points. Next up, I believe that's me. <laughs> yeah, fellas, y'all do know that Philly, that Philly is uh, is favored here. Philly is favored on the roll. We know. All right, I, I'm 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 gonna go against the grain here, man. I, I'm I'm gonna go with Philly. I'm, I'm gonna go with Vegas on this one. I'm gonna go with Philly. For sure, I'm definitely going to go with Philly. Last on the 1 o'clock slot, we got Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Favored, by the way, going to Carolina Panthers. Tampa Bay is favored by six. I think this is the hardest game on the slate, in my opinion. I because I want to triple down on the Bucks this week. But guess what? All Teddy Bridgewater does is cover Cover, cover. So I don't know what I want to do. Oh, my gosh. There's no way with this receiving core they fail again, right? There's no way, right? You got Mike Evans. You got Antonio Brown. You got Godwin. Uh, Gronk should Isn't wake up. Great. I mean, yeah. I just, uh, you got Scotty Miller. And you got, you got two horses in the backfield. You know what I mean? <sighs> but six points at the crib, man. And all he does is cover, cover, cover. Teddy, Teddy, we went against him last week, too, with the Chiefs. Ah, oh, silly us. Ah, oh, man. You know what? This should be a bounce box back for Brady. Angry Brady. Angry old man Brady, so they say, right? Uh -huh. I'm going to I'm, – I'm just – it's just too many points. It's too many points at the house. I got to go Carolina and Mr. Cover the Spread, Teddy Bridgewater, and, and, and his receivers, and Mike Davis in the backfield to cover, man. I'm going to go with the South Florida boy as well. Teddy Two Glove gets it done, even without Christian McCaffrey. It doesn't matter. Shout out to Matt Rule, because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a New York Jets fan, and my fucking team sucks, but Matt Rule came from fucking Baylor, and at least his team is fucking competitive. Jesus that's, that, that's a good way to take accountability. I'm fucking <laughs> over here how pissed off I am. Matt Rule, congratulations. You're doing a hell of a fucking job. I would love to have you as a head coach, because my offensive guru don't know shit. So I'm going to take Carolina Panthers plus the six points, Cam. Yeah, it hurts me to do this, but I got to go against you, fellas. Christian McCaffrey's back as of last week. Um, he had a great game, even though it was his first time playing since week two. Uh, the kid the kid is just a, a freak. He's a piece of iron. Um, but I unfortunately have to go with the Bucks here, even though I hate it because I do love Teddy. Um, but I keep saying this, the Panthers defense, I'm not ready to – I'm not ready to, to go with them yet, as they were the worst in the league last year. 
And I don't think it's going to be so much as Tom having a great bounce back game. I think it's the defense, the Bucks defense mm-hmm. is going to have a bounce back game. They, they, they were a great defense the first five or six weeks. And last week they just sort of fell flat. So I think it's their game this Sunday. Give me the Bucks minus six. They'll win by a touchdown. No, nah, backdoor. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think we all we all on the Buccaneers train for this one because I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the uh, well, I ain't. Tampa Bay. I ain't. It's split. Ain't. It's two and two. I'm oh. the only one. Oh, you, oh, so you, oh, 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 I thought I thought I thought Levon went with uh went with the Bucks too. No, Levon no, gave that big ass speech and still took Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna ride with Cam. Vitamins, Marcus. Nah, <laughs> nah, I'm gonna ride with Cam on this one, man. I'm going I'm going with Tampa. I'm going to go with Tampa. All right, next game on the slot, fellas. We got uh, the 4 o'clock game, Denver Broncos going to Las Vegas to see the Raiders. And the Raiders are favored by four. LeVon, what you think? I told you guys this last week, right? I love the Chargers, but they always, Anthony Lynn, <laughs> and those Chargers always find a way to lose. Last play by one point. So that's why I won last week with Oakland. And I'm going to do it again. What is it, three to four, four points? Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the dancing king um to to cover this spread uh of four points. I think Judy's good, fans coming back. Um you got Tim Patrick. I like that receiving core. Back back to whatever. But um I'm going four points too much. Hold up, wait a minute on this one as well. I'm not gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with the Raiders. They listen, they, the, the Raiders they did their thing last week. I'm gonna go again with them this week. I didn't go with them last week, I went against them, so I'm gonna go with them this week. They're playing in that big ass fucking stadium that looks like the fucking Dark Raiders ship. Looks like a Roomba. It, it definitely looks like a Roomba. Thank you. Yes, yeah. it does look like a Roomba. They just yeah. need to stick John Gruden on top of it like they do with the little babies and fucking that shit will go around <laughs> and shit like that. So I'm gonna go with the Raiders minus four. Who you got, Cam? I gotta, I gotta agree with uh, Emilio here. I'm actually surprised the Raiders looked great last week, and I, uh, I owe the Raiders one. I took them last week. Um, I, I paired it up in a parlay with the Dolphins. I took the Dolphins money line plus 10 against the, against the Cardinals. It was very brave of me, but I feel like I owe the Raiders. So I'm going to take them here. I, I'm, again, I'm surprised because the Raiders, I mean, they've been, they've been kind of nice this year. So four points at home. Yeah. I think that's, that's quite enough. I would imagine it'd be six and a half. Marcus, who you think sells better vitamins? You think Denver or Las Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Your money might go a whole lot farther in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It's different vitamins, though. Yeah, Las Vegas sell, uh, they sell nose vitamins. <laughs> so it's different vitamins you work with. Yo, Says the swinger. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going where my money is going a lot further. At. I'm gonna go against the grain here. I'm going with Denver Broncos plus four. Uh, I, I I went against them the last time, and I had no business doing that. I think I think they're gonna I think they're gonna hit the road, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna leave with a win. Drew Lock, baby, let's go. Yeah. So uh, next on the four o'clock slot, we got Rough Buff on the road going to Arizona. Arizona is favored by two and a half. They're at two and a half again. Cardinals, Cardinals, let's do it again, baby. Let's do it again. Uh, again, Bill's secondary has been kind of banged up this year. Um, I know they got, uh, was it, Trey Davis wide on the outside against Hopkins. Um, the same way Metcalf last week kind of did, did your man's in, I think Hopkins has a field day this time around, and I like the Cardinals to win this game. So I'm going to swallow the minus two and a half under a field goal. Oh, yeah. Give me a Hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. Let me explain yep. up to you. The Buffalo, everybody knows this, okay? And I have money on Arizona when Arizona beat Seattle. Seattle was the better team. Seattle, Seattle beat themselves more than Arizona beating them, in my opinion. That's just factual. So, in all actuality, I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen got his stuff together. He's going to allow the defense to do what they do. They're going to run the ball. They're not going to give Arizona as many opportunities. Their defense is way better than anybody they probably have played all season, Arizona. So I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills on this one. I'm going to say it like like Lee Corso says it every Saturday. Not so fast, my friend. I'm going with the Cardinals here. 
Why? Because I think they're upset about the loss against Miami. They're two weeks in a row at home, so they've been comfortable in their home state. There's a comfortability level. The Bills, it's cold up there. It's not cold in Arizona. You know, Emilio, you know I'm a huge weather guy. You know I'm big on this. They're going to go from an outside stadium in Buffalo to an indoor stadium in hot Arizona. I don't like that. I don't like going West Coast. They're going in the past. They're going in the past going to the West Coast. They're going two hours back. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. And three, besides, hours, three hours. Three hours. Thank you. Even worse. And besides, <laughs> what do you got? You got Calais Campbell coming back for the, for the Cardinals. I think he's going to do some work. I think he's going to get to Josh Allen. I don't think Josh Allen's legs are going to be a factor like they normally are. And I think Kyler Murray – is going to pop off, and I think Larry Fitzgerald is going to have his best game of the year this year. Ooh, yeah. ooh, good, good point, Cam. I, I, I like the angle you come in here. No, yeah, I'm definitely. You know, I, I normally run with rough buff, but this this um uh, this time around, I'm going with Arizona, man. I feel like the Cardinals are going to leave with that minus minus two and a half. <clears throat> even so, I don't think they'll even come near. I don't, I don't think they'll they'll cover that, even though. It's two and a half. Might be an easy, easy spread to cover, but nah, I think Arizona going to leave with that win real easy. Uh, next at the one o'clock slot, we got the L.A. Chargers coming on down to sunny South Florida for the Miami Dolphins. Miami is favored by one and a half. <laughs> that was worth a chuckle. <laughs> Football. In games with us. Dolphins favored by one and a half. I'm not no, no, no. I love my dolphins and call it call it, you know, me trying to just play the other side, the, the devil's advocate. No, no. I'm gonna take the charges plus the one and a half. See, Vegas is starting to smarten up. Vegas, uh, uh they know that Chargers lose by about a point every single game, right? So I think that Keenan Allen has a game because we're soft over the middle. Mike Williams on the outside, Guyton on the outside, and I think it's a cl- I think it's a good game, but I think uh, the Dolphins lose this game by three. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Herbert over Tua. Um, plain and simple, baby. I love I'm you, Florida. Go with, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Chargers, man. I'm going to go with the LA Chargers as well, and I'll explain why. The LA Chargers are the team that literally just gets there but doesn't know how to finish yet. I think Anthony Lynn can get Herbert to finish off the Miami Dolphins because the Miami Dolphins defense, while they did do a hell of a job against Arizona and they did do a really, really good job against the Rams, I think this is where they falter. The wide receivers for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers are really good. You got Mike Williams. You got Keenan Allen. Uh, Shout out to – I forgot his name, um, Cam, the tight end for – he was an XFL. Donald Parham. Thank you. Donald Parham as well. So, shout out to him. You know, we're big XFL fans on the show. I think Justin Herbert does get the job done and ends up getting the W in Miami. The weather's not really going to be a factor that much. It's only 84 degrees. It's partly cloudy. It's not really that hot. So, I think in all actuality, I think the Chargers get the job done in Miami. See this right here? Those are Zs. I'm holding Zs up. Because the two of you are sleeping. You're sleeping on the Miami Dolphins. I I like what LeVon's doing here. He's fading his feelings. We call that fading your feelings. He's taking the Chargers. And if the Chargers win, he gets to call himself right. And if the Chargers lose, as a Dolphin fan, he gets to celebrate. It's a win-win. It's it's genius. But I have to go with the Dolphins here because they've just been hot. What do they want, four or five in a row? I mean, you can't take a team like this that had, was able to win a game in Arizona for the first time in 1996. Now they're going back home. You know two is going to want to assert his dominance. You know he's upset that Justin Herbert was picked before him in the draft. I, I like the way the special teams and the defense are playing for the Dolphins. You, you got the Chargers moving from all the way from the West Coast all the way over to Miami. A lot of travel in place. They're going in the future by three hours. I, I got to take the Dolphins here. It's almost too easy. You're probably right because it's almost too easy, but I got to go with the Dolphins. I'm never going with the Dolphins, just for the record. <laughs> Yo, just for the whole way, Marcus, before, I, I, I knew I was going to say this, and I didn't say this before the show starts. For you guys that are not watching on YouTube, Marcus Mack is wearing a Wakanda Forever old school Vancouver Grizzlies Art. Mike Bibby throwback jersey. That's a fact. 
the only thing that would have been dope on Marcus Smack is if it was Sharif Abdul Rahim or Ooh. Big Country. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't mean? find that. I couldn't find that. I got the I got the Bibby joint. I don't know if y'all can see it. I got the Bibby joint. Right. Sad. I ain't going to oh. lie. I ain't going to lie. I really want them. I want I want to get my hands on one of the new jerseys, man. The new one of the new Brooklyn jerseys. I'm co- coming soon. Coming very soon, though. But as far as my pick. So you go with the Chargers? Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, for sure. I, um, you know, I, I knew, I knew that once Cam came in, he changed his hat. He has a new mustache. He's a certified therapist. This uh, this this episode. <laughs> what what condition you said Levon has right now? Oh, <laughs> fade your feelings. They got you yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's fading his feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Feelings. And he's got an, he's got the opposite of insomnia because they're all sleeping on the dolphins. All three of you are sleeping on the. Oh, dolphins. good. See this right here. This will wake you up. This right here. This will wake you up. So, anyway, you go, this shit shit sadder than a motherfucker. Yo, listen, if y'all are not watching, (laughs) this blunt right here is sadder than a motherfucker. I'm just pointing that out to y'all. I just want y'all to know. That's words of this tequila I'm drinking right here. I'm trying to slow down the sugar, so tequila is the the goal, right? So, um, next up, at 4.30... We got this is a throw up game. This is Cincinnati Bengals going to Pittsburgh. It's a throw up game. Come on, we all know Pittsburgh's gonna win that game. I don't even know why. What's the number? I don't even know. There's no number. There's no number. Because of COVID. I mean, because of COVID. What? Because there might not be, the game might not happen because of COVID. They can't can't just throw a number out there so we could just have some fun. There's no number on the game. Okay. I have a – wait, where is it? It's in Pittsburgh? It's in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, it's in Pittsburgh. The Bengals are going say, to Pittsburgh. I would say this game it would be like eight and a half if it was happening. I feel, do you feel good about that number, Born Eight and a half, nine? I mean, Joe Burrow could take – he could cover that spread. I mean, they could still end up losing the game. If the goddamn Dallas Cowboys with a dipshit quarterback, a slap dick quarterback, and whatever the guy's name was, ends up covering the – Hey, Joe he's Burrow's from the over. XFL. He's one of our own. Yeah, he's one of our own, but still, like, that's the way they think of them, if you really think about it. Like, every time they talk about these guys, they give them no real recognition for making it to the league. It's like, oh, he was in the AFF, or he was in the XFL. The homie, pay homage. Like, he made it all the way here. Like, I was so – Marcus, I know you noticed it, Cam, you noticed. I was so ecstatic when fucking uh, um, Mr. XFL, P.J. Walker, got into the game for fucking – I saw that. um, For uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Yeah, we all was very happy for him. Very happy. I mean, I, I don't know how he did in that game. You saw him more than I did, but I wish he would get an actual, an actual shot because, uh, yeah, we loved him. I almost wish he would go back to the XFL and just run it. Marcus, skip that game. Let's go to the 4 425 game. You talking about uh, the Cincinnati game? No, because yeah, there's no line for it. So it'll be okay, well, game. yeah. I mean, we, I'm guessing that we all just agreed on Pittsburgh, just throwing that out there. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not doing nothing for that game. Okay. All right. No. So the next at four twenty-five is Seattle Seahawks going to Los Angeles. Los Angeles Rams is favored by two. I went with Seattle last week, and they let me down. I'm gonna allow them to fail me again. <laughs> I'm Plus two on the road. Um, I think it's a little different this time around. They're staying on the West Coast. So I like that. Uh, I trust Russell Wilson over uh, uh, Jared Goofy, a.k.a. Mr. Jared Goff. Um, I, I, I mean, it's, this is just a Russell Wilson play for me, to be honest. I mean, I know the secondary is terrible. Uh, like Cam mentioned, they got Dunlap, I believe, to help out. And they also got their, their safety back, too. Uh, didn't make much of a difference, right, because Allison tore him up. But I just think if you're going to go tat for tat, I'm going to put my money on um, the MVP of the league, and that's Mr. Russell Wilson. So I'm going to go ahead and take the points, uh, plus two. Easy call. See this glove? Let me show you this glove. <laughs> for you people watching on YouTube, you can see that this is my Thanos gauntlet. For you people that are listening, I'm wearing a Thanos gauntlet. Now I'm about to snap LeVon's pick in- out of existence because I'm going to take the Rams minus two, and I'll explain why. 
The Seattle Seahawks cannot cover for shit. Jamal Adams is probably the worst cover corner safety in the fucking league ever. He's terrible. <laughs> He's bad. He's garbage. Can he tackle? Absolutely. The man's a fucking beast. I would love to have him on the Jets if he had the play run defense or a goal line or whatever it may be. Of all the places to take him to the Jets. <laughs> but the fucking guard, but the fucking guard somebody, that motherfucker can't guard shit. So I will take the Los Angeles Rams and Aaron Donald all day long. Man, put your son's toys down, Emilio. <laughs> Fine. Put your Fine. son's picks away too. Fine. Put his picks away. <laughs> This is – um I don't know. Obviously, we're just doing who wins the game and the points, but I love the over in this game. I know we're not talking about that. <laughs> but honestly, I think it's a bounce-back game for Russell Wilson. I think, you know, they're going to come back into shape here and put up a lot of points. And I think that Seattle's defense, like Emilio says, is garbage as shit. So, by default, the Rams are going to score a lot of points. I think the over is going to hit here. But – I have to go, even though I love me some Russell Wilson, and I think DK Metcalf is the most grown-ass man in the entire universe. That man, he's he does something that defies the laws of physics, gravity, every single week. You got people bouncing off of him. You have him tracking track stars down. I mean, he's he's absurd. So he's Thanos. I that, he is. He really he's a he's an inhuman form Thanos. I mean, you're not. You, sh- you should never be allowed to be six six, two hundred and eighty five pounds, and run a four two. I mean, that shit just it shouldn't happen. Yeah, it's so humanly LeBron. impossible. That motherfucker's <laughs> LeBron. That motherfucker's LeBron. Yeah, honestly, he's LeBron on cleats. So I wish he's, I could take the Seahawks. Yeah, but I have to take the win. Derrick Henry in the backfield. He shouldn't be a running back. Then you got DJ Metcalf, who's a receiver. We shouldn't yeah. be. A he's That's he's he's the he's the. He's the He's the wide receiver form of your highness, Derrick Henry. Yep. But I have to take the Rams. Okay. Well, you're wrong. You got Marcus. You know, it's hard for me to go against uh, Mr. Mr. Wonderful, Mr. My Goodies, Mr. Mr. MVP. It's, yeah, Mr. Positivity. It's so hard for me to go against him, man. But <clears throat> I think I want to go with the uh, Los Angeles Rams. I'm feeling lucky. I'm I feeling lucky. Funny, I got a funny feeling that Marcus is actually going to be on the right side and LeVarne is going to be looking ugly come next week. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was on my side for some picks that got wrong. And was with you, he got the wrong. He, he got the picks wrong. So here, you're in big trouble. Hey, look, look, I'm by myself and I love it. Yeah, he's by himself Harvey, on the Seahawks. That's good. <laughs> yeah. He's by himself. No, no, I'm, t- I'm taking the Rams. I know yeah, that. Yo, okay, okay, okay. Except him. Just like, oh, okay, okay. Only, just like I was the only one on the Dolphins, he thinks we're all sleeping on the on the Seahawks. So that's good on him because he can make up some ground there. Man, listen, I would sleep for a year and a day on Miami on Miami Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I agree, Marcus. <laughs> sleep away. I, next, next at the 430 slot. We got San Francisco 49ers. This is a huge spread, too. Going to New Orleans to see the Saints. The Saints are favored by 10. I thought about this game, you know, and what an, what an amazing win last week on New Orleans, right? Oh, such a good win. What an amazing <laughs> win. <laughs> and then you, you even got, what's his name in the game? Uh, Crab they shit pumped them. Good, good stuff. Crabless came in the game. How awesome was that, right? To play against his, his Buccaneers. I, that was cute, man. Um, ten points. Nick Mullins. Ah, that's gross. Brandon Ayuk is coming back, and Bourne are coming back. Yeah. Uh, I'm clearly just playing the number right now. I, I don't like the, the the Niners at all. They got smashed by your 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 Packers the other day. I'm playing this number. I don't feel good about it, but. I'm not. I'm gonna take the plus ten, and there's really no logic behind it. It's just too many points. They're banged up. A lot They're of going points. To, slant Boyd's gonna tear them up too. Uh, and and but I just have a, for whatever reason, Nick Bullins like to have these games where he just trash one day, and then the next day he looks like he could be a starter for any team in the league. Yeah, he's right about that. You're right so, about that. So I feel like he's gonna throw 300 plus yards and, and find four different receivers that Richie James, these guys that aren't don't even you don't even know their names. And I just feel like they're going to cover the plus, the points. So I'm going to take plus 10 
uh, 49ers. Yo, Marcus, those vitamins that you had over there, did you give any to LeVon? Because I think he's delusional right now. <laughs> I got I got two different kinds. <laughs> LeVon, which high. one did you take? The Saints, <laughs> the Saints are going to put their foot on freaking the 49ers' throat. Lick Mullins is going to be pressured all day long. Literally, Cam Jordan and them boys are going to be all over him, and the Saints are going to put up points. I think the Saints minus 14 in this game. I think the Saints blow them out. Yeah, just like this Ooh. game. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take the uh, I'll take the Saints as well. I'll take the I know we're not doing this again, but I'll take the under in this game as well. Saints defense has been looking nice the last week or two, and we know the 49ers defense to be a great defense, even though they got shredded up by the bad man last week in Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, they're coming off on some COVID, some uh, some COVID issues. I don't know who's coming back. I don't know who is even out. I'm not a big follower of the 49ers, but I have to take the Saints. I mean, I can't wake up on Sunday morning saying I lost because I took Nick Mullins and the 49ers on the road in the Superdome. I wouldn't feel good. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to take the Saints. They're marching in. By the way, they're very interesting. That's not a really a great correlation. So it's very interesting. You pick the under and you pick the Saints. So you see like a – yeah. The, the four down is scoring like less than 10 points. Like, that's what you see. It's risky. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's very risky. Very risky. I'm going to go for the uh, – I'm going to go for New Orleans myself. Oh, I don't – Harvey yeah. Island. <laughs> Harvey Island, baby. Let's I'm going to go, go for New Orleans. I just – I don't even – I don't even see – I don't see uh, San Francisco offense being able to really – touch New Orleans like that in the games that I've seen uh, San Francisco play. I'm, I'm going to go with New Orleans minus 10. So um, here's the thing, LeVon. Here's the thing real quick before you get oh, to the next game. Baby. Here's the thing. Oh. You got three people picking the last two games correctly, and you're going to be wrong. <laughs> Here, here's the problem. When I'm right for both games, you guys are going to be so behind. And these are the late games, too. I'm just going to – this is like the cherry on top, these late games. You know, I'm the late, I'm late game poppy. So, uh, so good. <laughs> Coming for the crown. Uh, we got, we got, we got two more games left, fellas. Uh, for for Sunday at the eight o'clock slot, we got Baltimore Ravens going to New England to see the Patriots. And guess what? The Ravens are favored by seven. What do you mean by guess what? Like it's a, like it's a surprise. Like it's. Like I mean, I would, I would think, I would think. Well, obviously, New England is not really playing too well right now. Cam Newton is whatever, straight to shit. And I would think, being that they was on the road, you understand what I'm saying? Maybe Patriots would have been uh, favored, but nah. Baltimore has been playing crazy ball. I, I don't, I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be favored. Put it like this: minus seven is too low. This game, this is going to be. A defensive clinic. Cam's gonna melt. I yeah. truly see the game be like a 34-13 final. I think I, the, 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 their offense hasn't been great. It hasn't been, but I, I think that they get the offense together a little bit. The defense is gonna come through and smack New England at the crib. So seven points is an easy call for me. And it's crazy because it's bittersweet for me because I want to see Cam Newton win. I want to see him win. I want him to be the poster child for y'all got me fucked up. I told you so. I want to see him win. Yo, Lamar Jackson, three touchdowns. She's going to throw for three and run for 100. It's gonna <laughs> telling Yo, you right now. Look at, Marcus, at Marcus Mack, I can't agree with you more. Cam's story is amazing. Him coming back, you all want to see him do good because – you know, Cam is Cam is Cam. Like he is really that good. Yeah, man. He's, he's, yeah. Cam is Cam. But not for nothing, the South Florida boys are gonna kill this kid. These kids. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come out. Jackson is gonna literally they probably win by ten points, not for nothing. The Ravens are gonna put the beatings on them. They're gonna do whatever the hell they want, smack them around a couple times, and Bill Belichick's gonna have one of those lost looks on his face when the when the game is over. Yeah, it looks like um so it's, it's seven points. It's in New England. Uh, I can't go against the Ravens, um, even though this is the perfect kind of game where the uh, the Patriots do cover the spread because Belichick is the king of of knowing how to to build a defense around your best offensive player. Um, so I think that he's going to keep his quarterback spy or even two 
uh, ready for for when Lamar Jackson goes to take off running. But I can't I can't go against the the Ravens right now. I forgot to to thank not to thank, but I forgot to congratulate you, Emilio, last week on the the huge loss from the Jets. That was a big <laughs> big loss. That was a win. That was a win, but it was a loss. It you was know what talking about. We, we got bigger plans. We got bigger plans in hand. We wanna we wanna draft Trevor Lawrence and fuck up his life like we fucked up Sam Darnold's life. So you know. Yo, listen. You yeah. know. You know when someone has accepted their fate, when they announce their team with. I mean, I know they're trash, but it's the Jets. I love them. You know, is yeah, he definitely has Mark, you accepted all the accountability. The Patriots. Huh? <laughs> he has accepted all accountability for the trashness that they are. But uh, yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'm going with Baltimore. Baltimore Ravens. Um, like I said, man, I hate to go against Cam Newton because I want to see him win. I want to see him rise to the occasion. I want to see him rub it in the naysayers' face. I want to see him rub it in Carolina's face. That's neither here nor there. I would like to see him and Bill Belichick put something together and come out on top. But they just been playing like they didn't come with their feet or something. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm going with Baltimore Ravens uh, for that last game, favored by favored, favored by seven. Um, so Monday night, the big game, the big game, guys, is this the big game? Minnesota Vikings against Chicago Bears. Minnesota is going to Chicago, and Minnesota is favored by three. You know what? This is – um. Nick Folk, for whatever reason, the Chicago Bears are pretty decent in like primetime games. Uh, I went to get them last week. I went to guess them last week and I was right. And Minnesota, they got a top three back in Cook. They got Justin Jefferson out there. They got Adam Thielen, both beasts. Um, but with Chicago Bears defense, um, getting a little, little healthier from COVID. They had some COVID issues last week, like I mentioned. Um, primetime, Nick Foles is gross for sure. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pick Chicago at the crib plus three. And that's that. There's nothing else to it. No chance in hell. Give me the Minnesota Vikings minus three. Dalvin Cook is going to run all over these boys. Kirk Cousins is just going to do just enough. He'll get the ball where he needs to go. Nick Foles and these boys are straight garbage on offense. The only thing that's good in Chicago is the defense. I'll give the defense the benefit of the doubt, but Dalvin Cook is too good, and I think Dalvin Cook and the boys end up winning. Give me Minnesota minus three. Yeah, I want to take I want to take the Bears because I love I love their defensive personnel, um, and I think that Kirk Cousins is like one in seven in prime time games in his career, something stupid like that. Um, but I watched the game, and, and to be honest with you, the Bears have been like a big cover team. They've lost their last like two or three games, but they've covered somehow so I do like them to to potentially cover here but I I, I can't look, watch their offense their offense makes my eyes bleed uh so I need to take the, the Vikings plus minus three and here's, the thing, though. here's the thing though the Minnesota's defense is not that good and they're not and they start the most rookies in all of the NFL that's and, and I think Allen Robinson can tear them up I think uh Mooney's pretty good he's, he's a he's a rookie and I think Anthony Miller uh, can do some damage in the slot. So I think they're going to have some success. Montgomery's just dust. He's bad. But I just think they're going to have some success and they'll be able to cover. So that's what I'm going with. The terrible secondary with Minnesota. Yes, Cook's a beast. But primetime game, I'm going to go with uh, the, the Super Bowl champion, um, the legend, Nick Foles. Marcus, before you get into your pick, LeVon, this crown doesn't care what you think. This I understand that. Cares about what I'm going to see you know. next week. I'm going to see you next week, buddy. Yo, listen, listen, um, I definitely, I agree. I agree with you guys. I think uh, Chicago's defense is immaculate. Um, Minnesota, the thing is, I can't lie. Um, I, I think I want to go with, uh, with Chicago on this. Y'all going to want to lynch me. But uh, I think I'm going to go with, with Chicago on this. I'm going to go against the grain. Well, well, that's going to conclude Mark, the show. We're done. Wait, 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 hold on. I, yo, I want to, I want to ask Levon this, man. How do you think this season is going to play out? This, uh, this, this NFL season. You think they're going to make it the full, 
to the Super Bowl? Like you, you think this like with no problems, no cancellations, no postponing, no nothing. You know, yo, it's all about the moolah. So there's no question. There's no question. It's yeah. About to- yeah. Millions of dollars to not make it. Whoever can't play, can't play. All right, you're canceled or you're delayed. Who next man up? We 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 moving forward. So that's not even a question. And if they got if they got it playing a bubble on one field in Orlando at Disney, they're gonna run that. They don't. Have- <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Season and and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Fans on the screen. It does not matter. It does not matter. We're tuning in, right? We got that's a big game. Exactly. But that's going to conclude episode 102 of the EAC show. Cameron, I appreciate you coming on and putting your insight on the the show and also for Cam's Corners. See Dinnan and Stash. I hope hope to see you next week, LeVon, because, you know, you're going to see me rocking this crown again in Marcus Mack. Enjoy the weekend, guys. We'll check you out. Make sure you click like, subscribe on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. And we appreciate you guys. Check us out next week. Peace. Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. (laughs) 